Hey kids, hope you're having a wonderful Sunday morning. This is Lucy and I am so excited to be with you guys today. I can't believe Easter is already over. Well, we still have the candy around to prove it. Man, we have so much candy in our house right now. Yikes, I needed to throw some away. Anyways, I hope you guys had an incredible week. Um, just at the church in the throne room, filming today's lesson for you guys. I sure wish you could be here in person, but soon and very soon. So before we get started with today, I just wanted to remind you guys that you are VIPs. You are very, very valuable to God. Your identity is in Jesus. You are a part of his family and God has a big plan and a big purpose for your life. So don't give up, don't grow weary, don't get so frustrated that you can't do what you want right now. Just hold on to the fact that God has a plan and you are a part of it. So last week, we left off with the resurrection of Jesus, that the tomb was empty, that Jesus is alive, which is just incredible news. His resurrection gives us communion with the Holy Spirit, which we're going to learn about. Um, it gives us abundant life. We are on Jesus' team, so we're automatically winners and champions. And by Jesus dying on the cross, we have physical healing as well. The thing that about Jesus that is so cool is that the abundant life he talks about, it's not just when we get to heaven, but he wants us to live an awesome, amazing life here on earth. And with him living in our hearts, we have the power to do that. So today, what we're going to go over is we're going to learn about what happened after Easter. What happened after Jesus was resurrected? Who did he talk to? Where did he go? And what does that mean for us now? So if you have your Bibles, if you want to go ahead and turn to Acts chapter 1 with me, it's kind of towards the end of the Bible, probably in the last fourth or so. It comes right after Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Then we go on to Acts. Now, the book of Acts is about what happens after Jesus goes to heaven and how the very first Christian church was born and how Jesus' name spread throughout all of the world by Jesus' followers and some stories and awesome things that they encountered. But today we're just going to focus on the very first chapter of Acts. We're going to learn what happened to Jesus after he rose from the grave. And then we're going to go into the start of a new series called Life with Jesus. And for the next few weeks, we're going to focus on when we have Jesus in our hearts, what does that mean for us? And how can we continue living life with Jesus? So let's go ahead and read Acts chapter 1, verse 1. So this is the beginning of Acts. In my first book, I told you about everything Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving his chosen apostles their instructions through the Holy Spirit. During the 40 days after his crucifixion, he appeared to the apostles from time to time, and he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive, and he talked to them about the kingdom of God. So this is really cool. Jesus didn't just rise from the grave and then automatically go to heaven. He stuck around for 40 days so everyone could see that he was alive, that Jesus, that it wasn't fake, and to leave them some last minute instructions of how to live because he was going away. This says in verse four, once he was eating with them, he commanded them, don't leave Jerusalem until the father sends you the gift he promised as I told you before. John baptized you with water, but in just a few days you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? He replied, the Father alone has authority to set those dates and times, and they're not for you to know. 
But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After saying this, he was taken up into a cloud while they were watching, and they could no longer see him. And they strained to see him rising into heaven. Two white-robed men suddenly stood among them. Men of Galilee, they said, why are you standing here staring at heaven? Jesus has been taken from you, but someday he will return just the way you saw him leave. So what does this tell us about Jesus? It shows us that he didn't want to leave us alone, that he knew we were going to need help because before, when Jesus was walking the earth, the disciples were relying on Jesus' strength, his wisdom on how to live and his teachings. And Jesus knew when he went away, someone else needed to come to give us guidance, to give us strength, and to give us wisdom about how to live. And so here we see Jesus ascending to heaven, and this is when the Holy Spirit enters the scene. Now the crazy thing is, is before Jesus went to heaven, the Holy Spirit wasn't here with people on the earth. And so back in the Old Testament, when we've learned about the Israelites and Daniel in the lion's den, and and David and Goliath and Jonah in the whale, and all these crazy stories, they could listen to God just like we can listen to God, but they didn't have the Holy Spirit. And so that's why it's so cool that we get to live in this day and age because we get to have the Holy Spirit with us to give us wisdom and guidance and power and love and the fruits of the Spirit. And we're going to go over that in the next few weeks, but I just want you to know that the Holy Spirit being with us is such a gift. In fact, people think Hundreds of years ago, the prophets foretold of the Holy Spirit coming. They were er eagerly awaiting for this gift that me and you get to have on a daily basis. So it is an amazing, amazing thing. So today we are going to learn about what does life with Jesus look like now that he's in heaven and he resides in our hearts. The first thing we're going to talk about is how Jesus gives us armor to put on to help us stay strong through the battle that we continue to face every single day. Now, if you think of what armor is, you might think of, well, let's name some animals that have armor. I think of a turtle. Turtle has that really hard shell, and so if it's being attacked, it can just go like this, right into its shell right and then something can't eat it or have you ever seen an armadillo it looks like they have these huge plates on them that are really really hard and they can roll up into a ball too if something's trying to attack them you also might see some of these in your garden how about snails they are like super slimy and like gross but they have these hard shells on them. And so when they get frightened or afraid or something's trying to attack them, they can suck up into their shell and stay really, really safe and secure. Even some of you might even have pet hedgehogs at home and they have those spikes all over their body. And that's a defense mechanism. That's a type of armor that keeps them safe from things that are trying to attack him. Now, if you think of other types of armor, like armor that humans wear, you might think of knights of the round table who would wear, you know, chest plates and they would have swords and helmets and, and they would ride around on horses. You might think of knights like that. But in Bible times, armor looked even a little bit different. It's believed that Paul wrote the book of Ephesians while he was imprisoned in Rome. He would have seen Roman soldiers there every day guarding over him with their armor, their swords, and their shields. And that's where he wrote this verse, Ephesians 6, 14 through 17. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Addition to this, take up the shield of faith, which you can ex extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. 
take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. We have armor of God, and Jesus wanted us to know that we have access to this armor. And it's not to actually keep us safe from fiery arrows that might pierce our arms, but it's pro to protect our insides, to protect our heart. And that's what we're going to learn about today, is how can we be strong in Jesus when he is on the inside of our hearts? So what the disciples didn't understand is they didn't understand that Jesus was going to leave. They didn't understand that they would have to rely on his strength and God's strength with Jesus not being there on earth. And it's through Jesus we can be strong. And that's what Paul's talking about in Ephesians is he's telling us, Hey, finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so you can take a stand against the devil's schemes. Stand firm. It's this truth about Jesus that protects us from any attack of the enemy that we might face. The enemy wants to destroy us, but what we learned about Jesus and his life, that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and we can be strong in him. Have you ever seen firefighters try to get ready before they rush into a fire? They have to put on armor too. So I thought I'd put, try to put some of this on today. It might be a little small, we'll see. So first, they need to put on pants, right? These special pants help them, whoa. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> my foot is stuck. <laughs> okay, all right, let's try that again. So these special pants help keep them from burning up in a fire, right? Oh, okay, that's about as far as this, these pants can go. I guess they're not really made for grown-ups. And they put on these special coats that help them Stay safe from the fire. Oh. <laughs> um, I don't think this is going very well. And then lastly, they have these special helmets to keep out. I can't even bend my arms. Help keep them safe from burning up. So as you can see, even though this doesn't fit very well, firefighters have special armor too to keep them safe. So, ow. How can we stay safe with Jesus living in our hearts? What special things does he give us to stay safe? and protect ourselves against the schemes of the devil. Well, let's learn about those now. First, we have to realize that the Bible says put on the full armor of God. It doesn't just say put on some of the armor of God. We have to put on the full outfit. So if I was rushing into a fire and I was a firefighter, I wouldn't just wear this hat because I, I wouldn't just say, well, I don't feel like wearing the other stuff today. It's too heavy, it's too hot. I'll just wear this helmet. What good is this helmet gonna do if I have flames crawling up my arms and my legs? I need to wear the full armor of God. Oh, hey, I didn't realize that you were coming here to watch me work out. Ever since I've been staying at home, I've been bench pressing markers, and it's made me pretty strong if I do say so myself. <laughs> Wouldn't that be silly? That would be crazy if people were just bench pressing markers to get strong. Well, Jesus in the Word of God gives us tips of how to stay strong, and that's what this armor that we've been talking about helps us to be. Now, if you wanna be really strong, usually, you lift weights or you run or you go to the gym, but that's just being strong physically on the outside. How do we stay strong in our hearts? 
That's a really good question. Well, the armor of God that we just read in scripture, the belt of truth, the helmet of salvation, the chest plate of righteousness, all of those things are ways that we can stay strong on the inside. Those things protect our hearts and grow our spiritual muscles to be strong in Jesus. You know what some of Jesus' last words on earth were? Is he said, do not be afraid, for I am with you always, even until the end of the earth. Isn't that amazing? And in Deuteronomy 31, 6, God says to Joshua, be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid or terrified, for the Lord your God goes with you, and he will never leave you or forsake you. Doesn't that sound familiar? The same thing that God said to Joshua when he was fighting a battle is the same thing Jesus told all of us before he ascended into heaven. He said, hey, I will be with you always. And so with that, we can have confidence that Jesus is always with us, that we don't have to be afraid. And when we do face battles, because the Bible tells us that we will, not physical battles, but battles in our hearts, maybe wrong thoughts that come into our mind, maybe things that happen that we don't have any control over, those are all types of battles. Jesus said, don't be afraid. I am with you. I am for you. My spirit lives inside of you, and I have given you armor to protect your heart, to protect your mind, and to protect your spirit. Isn't that amazing? Jesus didn't just leave and leave us alone. He left us with ways to protect and defend ourselves, and he left us with the Holy Spirit. We're going to learn more about the Holy Spirit in the upcoming weeks, but I just want to remind you, if you're afraid, if you're feeling really sad or worried or anxious, or you're just nervous about what could happen, remember, put on the armor of God. Put on that chest plate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the belt of truth, the sword of the Spirit the good news and the peace of the gospel like we read in Ephesians because those things will protect you, they'll guard your heart and mind and it reminds us to trust in Jesus, that he's fighting with us right by our side and that he has never once left us or forsaken us. Let's pray. Jesus, we know that you have good plans for us that you went up to heaven so that the Holy Spirit could come and could be with us and could give us wisdom and guidance of how to live and to give us power. Jesus, we want to receive that power. God, help us put on the armor of God so that we can stand strong when we face things that are really hard, when we're sad or frustrated or annoyed or when circumstances or situations that we can't control come against us. We want to put that armor of God on so that we can stand strong in you. Jesus, thank you for living inside of our hearts. Thank you that your word says you'll never leave us. You'll never leave us alone. And we can always trust in that. In Jesus' name, amen. So I thought it would be fun if we made some of our own armor with stuff that we found around the house to remind us to put on the armor of God. So what I found around my house, AKA the church today, but this is some stuff I would have at my house too, is some foil and some pieces of cardboard. Now be creative, use whatever you could think. You could use paper or empty milk cartons or empty graham cracker boxes or, strips of fabric or string. I want to see what you guys come up with with the armor of God. So I hope you have an incredible week and here is a snapshot of what I did and what my armor of God looks like. Love you guys. Have a great week.